Uh, Dan Evans, Pistol Pete, and my man, John Tharp. How you guys been? We're great, Andy. Good Happy day. to be How here. You? Uh, well, you're just saying, yeah. Coach, when you walked in, it's pretty good to be a Charger right about now, isn't it? it it's just awesome. It's We uh, we uh, walking in the, around the office today and just everybody preparing for NCAA tournament time and hosting regionals for volleyball and setting airplane tickets to go to Minnesota. It, it's uh, it, it's a fun atmosphere right now. And, and uh, I'll tell you what, those fall sports are making it tough for us winter sports <laughs> to, <laughs> to try to compete. But Setting the bar excited. high. Yeah, that's right. It's how much terrific. is that? How much is that a dynamic though inside that wing of the sports complex? I mean, all of you coaches are obviously concerned about your programs, but I know you're all friends too, and and all kind of pulling on the same rope for the school. There's got to be a lot of encouragement to to see how well everybody else is doing, also. Well, no doubt, we 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 love uh, seeing uh, Chris Gravel and the volleyball team, and Otter and that football team, and that whole staff, and. It, it, it just creates excitement and pride in, in uh, all, I think, for every sport. And uh, you also know that you try to try to carry it on our end as well and continue that success, that momentum that they're building with the fall sports here in the winter. But to see, you know, to see the football staff and how hard they work on a daily basis and uh, to see that, that women volleyball team and, and they're as hard working of a group of young athletes that I've ever seen. So... You, you become you become proud of them. I, I texted Otter on Sunday on the bus that, uh, you know, I said Otter, I'm really happy for. You. I feel like I'm I'm a part of this, uh, and uh, and, I, and we're 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 very close friends, and and we're just excited for those guys. Yep, for sure. Let's talk a little bit about your team. Uh, you're off to a great start. Uh, you know, the Ohio State Newark game, uh, 99 to 51, and then you guys are just getting back from Illinois Springfield. How'd that ball game go last night? We we won last night. Played pretty well. Uh, you, my assistants are seventy two fifty three. Was that? Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know we were excited about that. They were two and zero. They beat uh, two teams in in the GLIAC, uh in Northwood and in, in uh, Lake State on Friday and Saturday. And uh, we played uh, some of our best defense that that we played in our time that we've been at at Hillsdale. Uh, rebounded the basketball. Shot again over fifty percent. We just turned the ball over a little too much, but. Uh, you know, in-region game, and we all know how crazy, how important those in-region games are, uh, even in in uh, November here. Uh, so we were pleased to get that that road victory last night, and uh, and overall, I thought we we you know, there's a lot of things for us to get better at, mm-hmm. but uh, we were pleased with the test that we had, and uh, you know, we look forward to heading to Tennessee here. The thing that stood out for me against Ohio State Newark is. I mean, obviously you guys had them totally outmanned, outgunned, and all the rest of it. And yet the hunger that your guys were playing with out there, the passion, even when uh, we had a big lead, I mean, those guys were out fighting. And and it was fun to watch even from that standpoint. You know, it wasn't a great competitive ball game, but the hunger your kids showed, I thought that was an encouraging early season sign. I think it, you know, something our kids show every day in practice and finally being able to kind of let out some of those uh, emotions on another opponent makes a big difference for them. Uh, keeps them excited and enthusiastic even as uh, the game got a little bit uh, out of hand there as, as it wore on. But our kids, they play hard uh, regardless of the score, up or down. Uh, and, and that's what we're, one of the things we're most proud of, of them. And, and as well, you should be because they were diving for loose balls, and I, I think some of that comes from Gerber, uh, who John, you and I talked about him uh, Friday night. Uh, what a huge fan the, all of us are of that kid and what he does. And uh, Eck made the comment during our broadcast that he led the GLIAC last year in, in floor burns, and I don't know Eck, if there's a better stat to lead the conference in than that. Yeah, the only you know I saw somebody make a run at him though the other night. <laughs> The key play to me was that bad pass that went to the Hillsdale bench. (laughs) Coach Tharp caught it chest high and went right over the back of the chair. (laughs) Good thing his team was there to save him. I still have a little athletic ability left in me. (laughs) Not a lot, though. I'll tell you that. My reflexes are starting to disappear. Thank God I got great assistant coaches ready to keep me up. But when you have I'm a, surprised I didn't shoot it. <laughs> That's what I was shocked about it. Just chuck it, man. But when you got your best players playing that way, uh, you don't have to do as much coaching, I would imagine. You know what? We're we're starting to uh, we're starting to grow up a little bit, mm-hmm. and in the highs and lows, we're hoping uh, we won't have as many peaks and valleys uh, this year as we had in the past. But you know, Gerber is the 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 the, the pulse of our team. He he makes us go, uh, and uh, our, our guys look to him for leadership. 
Uh, but the thing that we're starting to see a little bit is even Brad Ganeen has taken mm -hmm. a, a huge step forward, led us in scoring and rebounding last night. Uh, and so I think, you know, a lot of the responsibility does fall on Tyler, but I, I don't think he has to carry it completely no. this year. And uh, I, the thing that we're really excited about is the depth of our team right now. I think our bench will allow us to win some basketball games this year. And you saw Matt Clark on, on Friday um, really step up and make some athletic plays. And uh, Tim Dazelski last night off the bench had seven rebounds, mm -hmm. I think, and, and some steals and is a, is a great defender. But I, I, our guys, it's, it's you know, like, like anything else, we have really we have really great chemistry right now. We have a great just uh, atmosphere on, on our day-to-day -day basis. And that, that, that you have to have that because if you don't have that, you know it's going to be a long season. So uh, we, we, we have a guy, we have guys that are, are speaking the right words, uh, saying the right things to each other. And, uh, uh, you know, they're looking forward to the next challenge already. Yep, and they're they're going to be a bunch of them. This GLIAC conference is tough. Go ahead, Jimmy. I was just going to ask how's how are the injuries? Everybody okay? Yeah, we're 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 Eaton played last night. Oh, good. He played last night, and uh, his meniscus was was bothering him. He started to feel better about three days ago. Uh, he had 15 points last night, and I think he only hit one three, mm -hmm. and so he scored in a variety of different ways last night, and he moved really well. Uh, he's so important to us because he stretches the floor. He, you know, be, be, everybody has so much respect of his three-point shooting ability, uh, and, and everybody's aware of where he's at. It just helps us to have more spacing inside. Uh, Washburn last night had 16, 16 points and eight rebounds. eight rebounds and was really impressive, uh, and they couldn't guard him. And so uh, it's he's you know we have to we have to have uh, a kid like Eaton to be able to stretch the floor for us. So. We know that he gets going and he can hit four or five threes on you at, at, at any moment, uh, and and uh, everybody has to respect him. Washburn, uh, Pete, uh, has been interesting because he, you know, the first time you see him, he's not only tall but he's got that big frame and all the rest of it. He looks like a, a good low post player, but uh, I've been told, and I'm no basketball coach, that it's tough to to learn to be a big man at, at big time basketball, and it's a progression that you have to go through and. And uh, you saw that just last year uh, with, with how much he improved. Where's he at on where you expect him to get and kind of that continuum? Well, we think he's taken a huge step this year. Um, you know, you, he's, we really worked on him posting with his feet and now with his body and really working on his balance. And he's done a great job of doing that. And last night was probably some of the best post moves he's made since he's been here. You know, another thing with Nick is he grew eight inches his, between his sophomore and junior year in high school. So he's mm -hmm. not one of these kids who's been big his whole life so he's kind of grown into his body a little bit and uh, you know he's done a great job of just uh, being a little post presence for us and uh, I know Eck made the comment on Friday night about no fouls you know and there, and uh, you know he's done a good job of not fouling he had four last night but a couple of them were tough but he did a pretty good job of just you know instead of starting to he's starting to bend his knees a little bit and when a kid makes a post move, he's just getting big and going straight up. So he's he's made huge strides for us. Why didn't I why didn't I grow eight inches between my <laughs> sophomore and junior? Year? I'm still waiting for my. Sport. I mean, what is going on? It just isn't fair. Uh, you're listening to Time Out with the uh, boys from the Chargers basketball team, and uh, just kind of looking at the, the perspective of last year. And uh, at one point, John, uh, you told me, kind of in a candid moment, we didn't know for a second if we were going to win another game all year the way that it was going. I mean, you guys went through an incredibly brutal first third of that season. Tough competition. Uh, your team maybe not uh, finding its legs and finding its rhythm. You had some injuries with Eaton being hurt. And, and I don't think anybody, I'll speak for myself, I, I won't talk about you guys, but a, a lot of us were skeptical that, you'd be able to make the kind of run that you made and turn it around the way that you did. And then to end up in a GLIAC championship game a couple of months later, six weeks later, I mean, just talk about that season looking back and, and what it means for your year this year. Well, it was, it was so funny. I didn't realize it until today that, you know, our second win last year didn't come until January. <laughs> and uh, it, it kind of puts things in perspective uh, with, with the start of our season. It was so interesting last year. Uh, you know, we had faith in our kids. We, we would see glimpses of things that they possibly could do. Uh, but it was it, with the four new starters on the floor and being so young, 
uh, and seeing some of the competition that we that we saw early. You know, you, you I heard you talk a little bit about the the defense for the Hillsdale Charger football team with the linebackers being freshmen and. And and you because you you know what it's like at this Division two level when you see these 22, 23, 24 year old men out there and you you know you have these 18, 19 year old babies at times, uh, and and that's what we had last year and it, it was interesting is 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 we talked many times about you know we're we going to get this thing done, um, and we kept on reassuring ourselves that we just had to keep the faith and and uh, you know kind of take a step by step approach because we we, we saw some glimpses and. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, we won one or two games in January there, and I think we just started to relax. And we weren't, uh, when things didn't go right for us, we could deal with it. Uh, we're at the beginning of the season last year, you know, one or two bad things would happen to mm -hmm. us, and all of a sudden it would be 10 minutes of really bad basketball. Uh, but I think we grew up with that, and, uh, you know, we're building from last year. You know, we, we really are. It, uh, in order to have a true program, uh, it, it takes time to just to build, to, if you want to do it right, something mm -hmm. that's going to last, uh, and and eventually, no matter who graduates, somebody's going to step up and take their 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 spot, and that's what we're doing right now. We're building, but I, I think that we're we're what we happened last year, winning the 15 out of 18 and going to the GLIAC championship. I think our guys got a taste of it, and and they, they become more confident and more sure of themselves. Uh, and and uh, I've said many times they have great passion for each other, so you start putting those you know bits and pieces together, all that that energy, that passion, that confidence, and only good things uh, are going to happen. And we have some tenacity, uh, we have some toughness, and our depth continues to get better and better. And uh, you know, so we're, we're again we're cautiously optimistic. We know this league is awfully tough. Finley preseason number one. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Grand Valley preseason ranked number three in the country. Ferris takes Indiana into overtime uh, <laughs> in exhibition basketball. You know, so we, we know that, but our guys have been really done a great job of kind of living in the moment, kind of a day-to-day -day approach uh, with what do we need to get better. And we'll take uh, the victory that we had yesterday, and we know there's some things that we need to get better at, and tomorrow at practice we'll clean those things up. Uh, and it's just kind of the approach that we have. And again, I think it goes back to our point guard. Uh, I think it goes back to our three seniors. Mm -hmm. And because those three seniors that we have, I may, you know, they, I know they're not household names. Maybe it was Gerber and Ganane and Washburn, but they were here from the start of of when we first arrived here. And uh, um, you know, they knew what we were trying to get accomplished, and they've kept faith. And so that's been the the greatest thing in in, in the world. Uh, this is my 17th year of coaching, and last year I, we, I've been fortunate to be around a lot of you know championship teams and things. Last year was as gratifying of a year as we ever had. Uh, I wouldn't have told you that in December. I was, yeah. I, was right. I was worried my key wasn't going to work yeah. the next day. <laughs> but uh, when it when when you look back at it and you realize what those guys did for each other, and and uh, I think for the coach.